So, your homework for your next class is just listening to this clip where I will go through how to write an argumentative text in five paragraphs. This is so that when you guys get to class, you can listen to it as you work with your projects, pause it, rewind it, check if anything like is out of order or see what you guys need, okay? So, to start on, we need to look at the five paragraphs that you guys are going to use. And you always start with your introduction, where you try to set the scene and take a stance on the question that you're asking or the problem that you're presenting. What is my opinion on this? Where am I coming from? An example could be that recreational use of drugs should be legal. And that's your stance. And then you also have to present why you think this is an important question. That's your introduction. Just to hook the reader and show your stance. And then you move on to your second paragraph, which should be your first evidence on the matter, or your first argument, that should relate back to your stance. Why should... Uh, drug uh, recreational drugs be uh, legal here is your chance to prove it so that is what you do you start by proving your point and to be a credible writer you can't just have one piece of evidence so you need more that's when you move on to the uh, to the third paragraph or your second piece of evidence that's where you come in with even more arguments to like strengthen your thoughts on the matter. And furthermore, when you then move over to your fourth paragraph, this here says it's supposed to be a counter-argument, and that's exactly what it should be. Something that you see is the problem with your arguments, because there's always a backside to everything. Someone's always going to be able to question what you believe and your evidences and your arguments. And if you beat them to criticize that, so you criticize yourself, then you make sure that, oh, even though I have this counter-argument, I believe that my, th my uh, arguments are stronger. So that's what you need to be doing. And so when you've presented your counter-argument, you move over to your conclusion, where you briefly restate what you said in the beginning, in the introduction, this is my stance, you repeat your two arguments, you present the counter-argument, and then you conclude by saying something that, even though recreational use of drugs, as the example here, uh, could lead to something bad that you've proven in your counter-argument, I still believe that since this and this reason your two arguments. I believe that it should be made legal. And that's basically the gist of it. But we then move on to what do I write about? You now know the outlying, uh, outlying framework for it, what, how you're supposed to write it, but what should you write about? So here it is up to you. You need to come up with ideas. So start by looking at your interests. What do you think you could write something relevant about? What's relevant to you? And how can you turn them into an argument? And that is your interests. How do you turn them into an argument? How do you speak about it? Who do you want to convince? It could be like anything from, oh, uh, trying to convince your uh, non-sport interested friend to come to a football game with you. Why think about that? How could you turn your interest in football, if you have that, into an argument to prove that someone should come with you, even though they're not really interested? And you can write about anything. It doesn't just have to be something that you believe some teacher or someone else wants to hear about. Take what you want. Do your part. And try to focus on that, because if you write about something that you enjoy, then it'll probably be a lot more interesting for the reader as well. So when you got something to write about, we then move on 
to writing a paragraph itself. So what you first need to think about of all of your paragraphs, then you need to think about unity. And that means that the entire paragraph should concern itself with a single focus. So that means that you only discuss one thing in every paragraph, nothing else. If you start discussing another thing, then you need to swap paragraph, then you're done with that one. You need to think about that. The second thing you need to look at is coherence. And that is that the paragraph has to be easily understood by a reader. You can help creating this kind of coherence by creating some bridges in your paragraph. And that could be that the same idea of a topic is carried over from sentence to sentence, that you can reuse key words in several sentences, and that synonymous words can be repeated in several sentences. So try to make it as easy for the reader as possible. And something like that could be uh, having topic sentences, which is the next part. And a topic sentence is basically that when you start your paragraph, the first sentence is just a short summary of what you're going to write. So let's say you take your argument and then you start writing, okay, this is what the argument is going to be. That's your first sentence. So when the reader comes to that paragraph, they're like, all right, the following 120 words is going to be about this. Okay, then I know that. That helps the reader. Furthermore, you need adequate development. And that could be using things like uh, examples or you cite some data. And that means that you have to discuss this fully and adequately. Not just saying, I believe this, I believe that, and I believe this. You have to have proof. You need to have references. You need to say, this is the case because someone else wrote about this in an article. Someone produced a study on this. You need to have something to prove that you are right. Just not your thoughts. Then you're not a credible writer. And then, just to like point out, when do I know when to start a new paragraph. The first like rule of thumb is when you begin a new idea or a new point. If it doesn't stick to what you wrote in your topic sentence, then you cut it out. Then it's done. So those are the basics for writing a paragraph. Then we're heading over to the next one, which is this example that I have made for you. And it looks like this. It's about a mouse, but still. Uh, the life of a mouse is quite intensive. They run fast, they look stressed, and make high-pitched squeals all of the time. Just imagine their tiny hearts pump at a rate of 310 to 840 beats a minute. And this comes from the Animal Care and Use Committee. Uh, furthermore, they constantly have to avoid dangers like animals, humans, or traffic when they look for something to eat, which is quite stressful. Here you can see I start this paragraph by writing, the life of a mouse is quite intensive. The rest of the paragraph is just about that. That's the only point I'm making here. And I'm trying to prove my point by having a reference in here. That is how you should think. It doesn't have to be more than this. A paragraph could be a bit longer, but it doesn't have to be more if you can make a serious point. And that's how it should work. And now we move on to linking words. And what is this? Well, these are words to help your reader, to help organize, to help you adequately structure what you're going to write about. And that is saying 
using words like furthermore, moreover, however. So in your counter arguments, uh, when you, you're done with your arguments, then you can start your topics uh, sentence in the counter argument session by saying, however, even though I presented these points, there are some thoughts that go against this. You show the reader that, oh, there's a break here. Something else happens. If you have lists where you uh, give a lot of examples in your text, use words like firstly, secondly, uh, and finally. To like Just show that there's a list here and to help the reader follow your arguments. And when you come to the like to the ending, to the conclusion, then you write in summary or to conclude, then you try to wrap everything up just to help, just by the first words in your paragraph, you can guide a reader through your entire paper, paper making it really easy for them. And that makes a happy reader. You don't want to be like, have to think too much when you read, you want to see the content and just take that in. And having these words, starting off with them, having them in the right places, helps a lot. And I would like, if you would like to look more on this, I would like, check out the link that here below uh, and follow that, because there you can read a lot more about this. And that's, go there, whenever you're writing a project and you search for what you need help with if it's referencing if it's like paragraphs and if it's with your grammar anything that could be like a real lifesaver just having something to like oh there's a lot of information here so that's a tip just check that one out and just to say that now that we're done with this and so this is your first like homework and for next class on Wednesday morning, you're going to start writing. You're going to start thinking, finding ideas. You're going to find sources so you can prove your points. And I'm there to help you with that. So, but uh, the next homework after that class will take up uh, how you write a proper conclusion and how you do your references. How do you write those properly? And this is something that will help you not just in this project but in any other project that you write so good luck with your writing and i'll see you guys on wednesday